I'm having so much fun. Da, da, da. <laughs> give me, give me more. Give me, oh, give me, give me more. Hey, crew, I've got the key to that 23 Porsche 911 Sport Classic. We are going to take it for a drive, but first, let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. The Sport Classic is one of Porsche's heritage models. The last time we saw it was on a 997 generation 911, and that car was limited to just 250 units. This one is limited, yes, but to 1,250 units. You can distinguish it by the classic Porsche badges with more of the orange looking stripes than the newer reddish looking ones. It also has stripes up on the hood, onto the double bubble roof, and onto the deck lid spoiler. Otherwise, we still have the Matrix LED headlights that are above LED DRLs and turn signals. This one is painted in sport gray metallic, and you can get it in a different gray color, a black, a blue, or Porsche's paint to sample, where you can choose any color as long as you've got the money for it. At the side is a set of five spoke center locking 20 inch front, 21 inch rear wheels wrapped in Pirelli P0 tires, 255 section front and 315 at the back. Within those wheels are standard carbon ceramic brakes with black painted calipers. You get this gold exclusive manufacturer badge and this Porsche 60 graphic honoring Porsche's 60th anniversary. The profile is an iconic silhouette and it sits tightly on those five spoke wheels, but the Sport Classic's biggest visual standout is at the back, where that duckbill spoiler that's reminiscent of the 1973 Carrera RS 2.7 dominates your attention and has my inner kid doing cartwheels right now. That's below a Porsche Heritage badge and above more gold lettering amidst the LED taillights and turn signals. And down low, the Sport Classic shows off some 911 Turbo style with these two oval exhaust outlets, black gloss diffuser, and just some sheer width of the rear end. Honestly, the duckbill sells me on the entire look. And I like the contrast of the gray and gold. I even like the graphics. My question for you is which Sport Classic looks better, the 997 or this 992? Let me know in the comments and let's check out the interior. Opening up with the door handles deployed from their flush positions and looking inside at this cognac semi-aniline leather and papita or houndstooth fabric interior. What a cool combination. I love this. The seats themselves have Porsche crests on them. They're 18-way power adjusting, including adjusting side bolsters and thigh support. There's more of that cognac leather around the floor mats, and then you get aluminum accented foot pedals. There's a Sport Classic aluminum tread plate. Here is your release for your front trunk, and inside you've got five cubic feet of space, or enough for me to fit inside. And the back release is for your engine cover. To get to the back seats, pull on these leather straps. Unfortunately, that doesn't automatically slide the seat forward, so you'd have to do it manually, but do I really have to get back there? Why, why did I do it? I can't even put the seat back on my six foot frame. And even if I could, the headroom situation is terrible. And when thinking about kids, there aren't any headrests, so it's not even super safe back here. I would just use this area for storage. Please get me out of here. Okay, with that silly experiment done, looking at the doors, you've got two tones of leather here with open pore wood trim. We've got three positions of memory. You get power adjusting and power folding door mirrors, one touch windows, not very much storage here, but an upgraded Burmester surround sound system as an option. Hopping in, not all that bad to lower yourself in. Door closed thud. Ooh, it's so solid. The steering wheel is leather wrapped and power adjusting. You've got your drive mode selector here, icons to control parts of the digital gauge clusters left and right. The center tachometer is analog. Leather is up on the dashboard, no head up display, but you do get the Sport Chrono lap timer. And the back lining for all these gauges is like a green color. That's a throwback. The infotainment screen is high resolution, easy to use, and it's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. To the right of the screen is a special 911 Sport Classic badge with your number out of the 1250 being produced. That's baked onto some open pore wood trim. Below are knurled finish toggles for front end lift, exhaust, traction control, and adaptive dampers. Below is a physical volume knob and tuner, toggles for your climate control, and that's all on some gloss black, which I wish was metal because this just smudges. You do have icons for front seat heating and leather wrapping for your seven speed manual transmission. Further down, you can remove the cup holder, and that's number one. Number two is there on the dashboard. 
Behind this open pour wood trim, the letter on the console says exclusive manufacturer and inside is not much space at all. Basically just stick your smartphone and plug it into one of those two USB-C ports. Headroom up front is excellent under this perforated suede wrapped headliner and visibility is really not bad. Plus there's standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. As with the exterior, I am all in on this interior design. The rear seats are decorative, but at least they're pretty. There's not a lot of stash space inside, but the front trunk means you can bring along good sized baggage. Now we need to take the 911 Sport Classic for a drive. All right, let's fire it up. The flat six is fired up. And that is how you start a Porsche with the ignition crank. These new models that just have the push button is so much less nostalgic. I want that full Porsche experience and I get it here in the Sport Classic. I also get to engage the clutch. That's so fun. Hello Captain Crew, thank you for joining me for this drive in the 911 Sport Classic. And our drive modes are here on this dial. I'll go show you Sport and let you hear the baffles and the exhaust open up. There's Sport Plus, Individual, which is customizable, and a wet weather mode. We'll begin in normal, and I will turn on the auto blip function for this manual transmission. Bring it over into reverse, all the way to the left and up, and that has a surround view camera system for us here on the left. You've got a high resolution backup camera with trajectory lines. And after disengaging the parking brake, we can scoot on out. Up into first, and we'll begin with a turning radius test, as we do here. Wheel fully cranked. And we find ourselves a tidy turning circle, thanks to the rear wheel steering system that is standard. Rear wheel steering, just making sure I said that right. Rear wheel steering, that's standard on the 911 Sport Classic. Now for the turn signal sound. Which is so gentle. Just caressing your eardrums with the turn signal. That's weird, Miles. Moving on to the world famous horn test. Oh. <laughs> it sounds startled. It, like the car was just caught, hey, hey. You cut me off there. That wasn't cool. It's just my interpretation. Um, the powertrain. Let's move on to that. 3.745 liter. They round up to 3.8, but really it should be rounded down, shouldn't it? 3.745 liter twin turbo flat six motor. This is shared with the 911 turbo, but in this application, due to the limitations of the seven speed manual transmission, we have 543 horsepower and 442 pound feet of torque. That is down 29 horsepower and 111 pound feet compared to the 911 turbo. With the seven speed manual, however, this is still the most powerful manual equipped 911 you can buy, beating out the 502 horsepower 911 GT3. And like the GT3, the Sport Classic is rear wheel drive only. So that's another departure from the turbo, from that PDK only, all wheel drive only version of the 911. Now, unlike the GT3 with its ultra precise six speed manual, this seven speed unit in the Sport Classic is shared with the regular 911, which isn't to say it's a bad transmission by any stretch. The clutch engagement and release point are very easy to measure. The throws are nice and short. The cogs are very well defined, but you have that extra row of forward gears. And so there's potential when you're really enthusiastically driving and you're rushing those gear changes to end up in the wrong gear, to go and end up in fifth when you're going for third, to even end up in seventh if you're going for fifth. And that just doesn't happen in the GT3. And I feel like when you're into the deep 200, where are you going, sir? When you're into the deep $200,000 territory for this Sport Classic, you should have the best from Porsche and the best from them of manual transmissions is the GT3 six speed. With all those gears, you might be wondering about power delivery. And I'll say this, 
you don't want to touch that seventh speed unless you're just absolutely coasting on the highway because outside of the peak torque that comes in at 2000 rpm you have next to nothing in terms of your power delivery so i'll go into sixth gear and just put my foot down nothing 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 2000 hits and now we're surging and if you are anywhere in that range of we'll call it 2400 to 6000 rpm this thing kicks the mid-range is so strong but outside of that you will need to put your patient hat on the twin turbos get to spool and get to going and in the normal drive mode the throttle tip in is really very gentle so that if you need extra i would recommend sport you can also get the benefit of the baffles in the exhaust opening and hearing more of that flat six or even sport plus take it down a gear or two and enjoy that momentum. And speaking of momentum, let's see how much the Sport Classic can generate from a dig in our real world zero to 60 test with my race box set up here to record. In the Sport Plus drive mode, there is launch control even with the manual gearbox by holding in the clutch, pinning the throttle, and then sidestepping the clutch. Here we go. And there's 60 in 3.92 seconds. Yes! Now, while 3.9 seconds is plenty quick and perfectly matches Porsche's estimate for this car, I myself saw 3.85 seconds from the one other run to 60 that I did. An independent test when the road surface conditions are just right got into the mid to low three second range. So when you do have a drag strip at your disposal, those are the kind of times you can expect from the Sport Classic. But as with all Porsches, it really requires a good curvy road to speak into the dynamics of this car. First and foremost, the steering, which is so light and exacting, complemented by the dynamic chassis control that's standard on this car, the adaptive dampers, which have firmed up here to keep the body flat and the active anti-roll bars do the same hearing more from that flat six now with the baffles and the exhaust opened up in sport plus flipping my own throttle now so i guess i can turn this off oh that surge out of a corner Carbon ceramics cut that speed before you need to dive in. Those are standard on this car as well, and I'm thankful for them. Doesn't immediately jump out to me as a rear drive vehicle. Feels a lot like the all wheel drive turbo. A little less weight. Rear wheel steering system does help you tuck in. You can change up your line in a corner with careful throttle inputs more so obviously than you can in the all-wheel drive turbo but it's not a wholly different driving experience it's just a great one at 3500 pounds or so it's no featherweight but it really manages its body well. The drive is so very smooth. Long wheelbase, tons of grip, a torque vectoring rear end to scuttle the car out of a corner, utilizing all of the power it has at its disposal. perhaps why I don't feel perhaps the fear factor of some rear drive cars, especially a rear engine rear drive car. It stays so composed. Much more of a GT car drive. 
than a super sports or track car one. But there are only a handful of GT cars that I can think of that would be this precise, this entertaining on this kind of a road. And it just speaks volumes to Porsche's DNA and focus as an engineering team. Everything they make has to be a driver's car. They're just with slightly different bends to them, slightly different flavors. One thing I wish I heard more of was that flat six. Yeah, we're getting more of it in Sport Plus, but it doesn't have the character even of the 3.0 that you get in the GTS, and certainly not of the 4.0 in the GT3. On this downhill section, I'm especially grateful for those carbon ceramics to resist the heat fade. Oh, what a joy. And as per usual, my last run up the hill is just gonna be for me. Okay, I'll share one other thing I'm learning here. The rear drive platform does allow you to use not just small bits of throttle to change your line, but also the weight transfer that you can't really do in the all-wheel drive turbos. Look, the gearbox isn't as great as the GT3s, but it's still such a good transmission. So much fun. Da, da, da. <laughs> give me, give me more. Give me, oh, give me, give me more. And that bit of foolishness will lead into my miles per hour word of the day, which for the 23 Porsche 911 Sport Classic is distinguished, meaning authoritative or commanding respect. And let's be honest, pretty much every 911 demands some level of respect. This car is just legendary at this point, but the Sport Classic, even in that realm, is a cut above. These handsome throwback looks on the outside and in, and this unique manual rear drive 3.745 liter flat six motor driving experience demands some respect and this is a distinguished automobile. Oh, but you will have to pay handsomely to drive such a distinguished automobile and I will tell you how much in just a sec. But first, let's talk about top speed and fuel economy. The top speed in the Sport Classic is 196 miles per hour and the fuel economy is 15 mpg in the city, 21 on the highway, and 17 combined. The starting price of the Sport Classic, all 1,250 of them, is $274,000. And this one as tested is 283 grand because it wouldn't be a Porsche if you couldn't add on options to their most expensive 911, would it? Well, actually, now that the 911 ST is here, the kind of touring version of the GT3 RS, and cost $291,000. That is technically the most expensive 911 you can buy. This is just the second most expensive, but I still think everything in here should be standard. Before we frame that price among competition, let's revisit daily driving for one sec. There's one detail I didn't cover, and that is 
the ride quality. So these adaptive dampers I mentioned firm up very nicely for your canyon carving, but they also offer excellent compliance around town. Bumps don't really rattle you that much, and as you're going over undulating road surfaces, the body isn't moving all that much with it. It's just really a pleasant car to putz around in. Typically, my competitive musings include vehicles from other automakers, but in the case of Porsche, their 911 lineup is so extensive and somewhat confusing that I felt it might be helpful just to keep this competitive talk to the 911. So we'll start with the 911 GTS, which like the Sport Classic, is available with a seven speed manual and rear wheel drive, but unlike the Sport Classic, it starts at $153,000. It makes 472 horsepower, it gets to 60 in the same 3.9 seconds as this car, has top speed slightly lower at 193 miles per hour and fuel economy slightly better with its lower displacement flat six at 19 combined. Then we've got the 911 GT3. You can choose either the standard GT3 with a big old wing or the GT3 Touring. Both start at $171,000, make 502 horsepower, get to 60 in 3.7 seconds, have a top speed of 199 miles per hour and fuel economy of 16 combined. Working our way up the price scale, we've got the 911 Turbo that starts at $184,000, makes 572 horsepower, gets to 60 in 2.9 seconds. That's all wheel drive for you. Has a top speed of 199 miles per hour and fuel economy of 17 combined. Or the 911 ST, which it did say starts at $291,000, but if you round up, it's 292 grand. It makes 518 horsepower, gets to 60 in 3.5 seconds. Has a top speed of 196 miles per hour and fuel economy of just 15 combined. Yes, the 911 Sport Classic is exorbitantly expensive but in exchange you are getting exclusivity with just 1250 units being produced and you're getting the best looking 911 outside and in in this reviewer's opinion but this reviewer also values value proposition and driving dynamics more highly than those things which would have me buying the $100,000 less expensive 911 GT3 and I would get the big wing because I just love the look and I would savor that incredible six-speed manual transmission that 9,000 rpm revving four liter flat six and a powertrain and just one of the best driving cars you can buy right now that's that's what I would do. What would you choose? Of the 911 range, would you go GTS? Would you go GT3? Would you have the Touring or not? Would you have the Turbo? Would you have this Sport Classic or that ST model? Let me know in the comments. I hope you guys have enjoyed this POV drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I'll see you again next time.